Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to the Call of Duty League playoffs. We're in day four, match number two today. So far, it's been a wonderful morning of games thus far, but we're ready to rock and roll into a few more. Now, we have some fun news. Now, again, don't forget that tomorrow we will be announcing the Call of Duty League MVP presented by Astro that's coming up on Sunday. Don't forget to tune in and find out who that player is. And again, very excited to to, uh, to announce that one. It's going to be very cool. I think for a lot of players, they're going to be uh, maybe not surprised, I think. But, uh, you know, we've had, our, we've had our picks. We've had our videos. We've had our thoughts and feelings about it. But we're actually going to make the announcement tomorrow. Very excited to get into that one now. But that's not the only piece of fun news we have. We have a big match coming up now. Of course, Minnesota Rocker going up against Optic Gaming Los Angeles. If you're a very big Rocker fan, I know there's a lot of you out there. You can join their Discord. They're giving away prizes. There's going to be analysis. And there's all sorts of socially distant fun being had there if you are a Rocker fan. Follow the link on screen in there, twitter.com forward slash Rocker. More information on how you can get into the Discord and how you can get involved as a fan. If you're a troll as well, go for it. Why not? Could be fun to spice things up. I bet they've got mods in there. But hey, my name is Miles Ross. I'll be one of the commentators taking you through this next one. Chance, how are you, my friend? I'm doing fantastic, Miles. I appreciate the intro. I don't know if incentivizing trolls is the best idea, but uh, it should be a good time. And again, we've stated this at almost any given opportunity. Rocker has been an incredible organization throughout the year. Their watch parties, when they were in person, were great, and they had themed drinks based around their uh, their team colors and whatnot. But the socially distant aspect of it, of course, ever so important. But an incredibly interesting series we have. When you look at the side of the Minnesota Rocker, obviously the big story is going to be Exceed. He's the new man on the team, and from what we saw from him the other day, fills into the roster pretty nicely, is disgusting with this sniper rifle for just the brief moments we got to see him. And of course, on the flip side for Optic Gaming, they also had two new players come onto the roster. This is the third or fourth tournament that we have seen with these young men, and uh, it's just going to be an interesting little battle. Not a ton of information. It is a Game 5, Round 11, has it written all over this match. And I'm excited to watch, too, because one of the themes we had for uh, at least Exceed in the Minnesota Rocker was we want to see that them on the sniper maps when it comes to search and destroy because we can see how the young man can fill god rx's shoes and he's one for one right the one map we got to see it he was incredible I mean, one map was all we needed but uh chance we're going to talk about that one map again we had dashi the dark knight dived right on in in that moment of peril and possibly Oof. well he did definitely save ogla but mate talk me through that so that match in itself i mean it was quite the series but dashi himself truly the savior for ogla i mean that genuinely has to be one of the most like single best performances we've seen at cod champs right like this man not warm at all just like gets the call up randomly has five ten minutes to get prepared and and then comes out and dominates and just shows you a glimpse of how great he can truly be. And it's just an interesting situation as well, right? Because on this map, Piccadilly, the record for Optic Gaming on the entire year is one in four. The only time they have won this map is when they played with Dashi on super short notice and they got the win and it was a sight to behold. So you got to tip the cap to Dashi. It was a, a great to see him back on the sticks. Good to see him back on the sticks. Good to see him back in the in the uh, the swing of things here in the Call of Duty League. And again, he's been uh, he's been missed. But mate, we've got to roll into this game. We've got to get going, brother. We got a lot of Call of Duty to play today. Let's have a quick look at the game fuel keys to victory. Minnesota Rocker up first chance. Absolutely, and exceed again. He is just filling in, being that new role, whatever they need him to do, which of course the pacing issues was the biggest thing, but really it's the seam, right? Like he is that speed demon. He is the reason why, well, not he's not the reason for the issues necessarily. He's playing at the speed that he needs for the team. It's someone needs to be able to keep up and of course exceed needs to be that guy. And frankly, I think a couple players across the board, pretty much the entire team needs to step it up just a little bit more because it's do or die. You lose now, your tournament in your year is over. It's going to be over indeed. Game Fuel keys to victory now for Optic Gaming Los Angeles. This is it, dude. Can they keep the run going? Ah, uh, dude, hey, again, <laughs> it is just such a difficult role, but I think they can, right? They have shown moments of just an incredible uh, greatness, let's say. I think the best win this Optic Gaming team has on the year so far is they took down Chicago. And if you can take down teams that have won tournaments, in my mind, you have proven to at least yourselves that you can win. But really, it's Raz and TJ. Those are the guys that need to step it up, right? If we're having this sort of SMG battle with the Seam Nixseed versus TJ and Draza, they need to make sure that they are completely on point. And again, it's the exact same story in my mind from Minnesota. They just need to kick it up just another notch.
One more notch. Can they go all the way? Let's have a look at our predictions now, Chance. Uh, mate, I think this one for me. I mean, I'm looking down at my screen. I'm seeing these two teams. I know what I gave production, and I think still. Uh, I'm not sure who's going first, but it's probably going to be. And again, this is the predictions brought to you by the Sony Xperia smartphone. Chance, I think I'll, I'll go first, mate. I'm just going to take it. I actually think this is an OGLA 3-2, brother. I really do. I don't know about you, but I think it's going to be a 3-2. Dude, I'll say when we were thinking about it this morning, I've been back and forth and flip flops so many times, but my gut check reaction was to go with Minnesota. And I think I called it for them in a 3-1 fashion. I know they took the L to New York, but the way I saw it is their S&D was on point. Exceed actually looked incredible throughout the entire series. He was the main slayer for the team when it came to the first Ramaza hard point they had. And if you have the new guy on the team that has barely any experience and a Todd chance, he's stepping up and performing the best. That gives me a lot of faith long term and of course you have to talk about the two world champs that are already on the minnesota rocker silly and assault they played well but obviously they need to kick it up again i can only say it so many times make it a little bit better but i have faith in the minnesota rocker well here we go game number one in what should be a very exciting series now lest we forget friends this is an elimination matchup the loser will be going home the winner will advance onwards Leaf will play the Florida Mutineers. That's going to be a long road ahead of them, Chance. Let's get into this one, my friend. Azir Cave, map number one. Rocker versus Optic Gaming. Let's get into it. And Azir Cave for the Minnesota Rocker. It has been a sweet spot for them all year long. It's one of those situations where they have gotten so detailed with the map that Silly has been consistently pulling out the ground for, the, I believe it's the fourth hill that we have. So their particular, they have everything down to a science. And of course, that just means they need to execute. Well, that's going to be the question, whether or not they can truly execute. Rocker with the first few moments here in the hard point, but not a whole lot of presence in the middle of the map. And that's going to be almost a clean five for OGLA. They managed to pick up four, and now a quick dive into the hard point. They still have favorable side of the map. Oh, no, they don't. Number one just spawned on the right-hand side. Number one, three, they're spawning. Drazas let them slip through. That's an unprecedented turn of events to start things off. Talk about the nitty gritty. They know the spawn so well. They're like, hey, let's lose the opening break to make sure we get set up long term. And of course, that flip is a massive impact on a map like Azir Cave. Of course, though, Optic Gaming still inside the actual hard point, still able to accrue at least a little bit of time. Frankly, if they're able to get the final 15 seconds, yes, it's unfortunate they lose the spawn, but they're still able to build themselves a decent little lead. A decent lead, but the plot twist is already there. Now, OGLA have got a break from the front at this point in time. It's going to be a lone defender of Silly on by the cliff face. Two members of OGLA making his way forward. Exceeds going to be watching the center there of the cave. Finds himself another one. Nice bit of work. Is he going to be able to get TJ? No. TJ now will open that lane of attack. Assault still spawning at the back. And it's going to be easy pickings for one of the finest ARs in the Call of Duty League up front. 45 seconds remaining with this hard point chance. We're going to see a lot of time go the way of the Minnesota Rocker. However, 10 kills for Quavo already. The relentless assault now from OGLA. It's got to be on. And already, this is just a, a battle effectively between slang power versus ability to, well, die and get the better spawns because Optic Gaming, that 15 point lead, but Quavo already 10 kills to his name. The second hill is not even over, and he's letting it ride, able to pick up two more. And frankly, if anything, this just highlights how difficult some of these hills can be to break. The fact that Optic Gaming is slaying like that, picking up double kills left and right, and they can't even have the time to go and pick up those final few seconds of scrap, they're forced to go for that rotation. But the good news for them, Paulo, already is the trophies out inside the point. You see Quavo's got the mid-map cut on lock for that rotation. And Optic actually just pouring the pressure out towards this well side. Azim's going to get dropped. And well, Silly, at least the lone man for a moment on this side. Again, Optic, the pressure they have with all of these M words right now is outstanding. Yep, so Rifle Man's world right now. Silly can only get so much done alone. And Exceed now brings the MP5 to the fight. Gets it done in range there on the Quavo. Slash is going to be up next. And Exceed finds himself at third in a row. How much longer though can he hold the hard point now as he trying to push these members of OGLA back? Hollow is going to find a nice kill. Nassim, Rocker, now pushing that front line forward, trying to keep OGLA as far away from the hard point as possible. Now the lead will change. We're already seeing rotations go down chance. We're seeing those plays taken over cave already. 
And again, that rotation right now, it's effectively a one versus four for TJ Halley, the only man over there. He's waiting for Draza to come up on this full flank. And of course, Minnesota, Johnny on the spot. They know where the pressure is going to be coming from. They deal with Draza on the flank. They deal with TJ on the front side. And now Hollow is the next lone man for Optic Gaming. You can see the way that Hollow's playing it on the mini map, waiting for his teammates to potentially go for that full flank. But Minnesota, not going to be waiting. They're going to push out nice and aggressive, try to make sure that they keep this cave pushed out and just force Optic Gaming the flood all the way through the front, and you can see the struggle that Optic Gaming is having. Yep, and crazy thing it. too, because again, Quavo, 17 kills already to his name. His production so far has been in search. His engagement on point, and you see the pressure maybe just enough for Optic Gaming to start to push through, to start to see maybe a small crack in this Minnesota Rockers defense. But either way, Minnesota, in spite of the fact that they are getting outslayed by just a little bit, in spite of the fact that, well, maybe outside of the first rotation it's been a struggle still able to hold about a 20 point lead going into new chance they were born in the cave molded by it well, you know when they first saw it on the map it was already what the second home series of the, the year there we go rocker still keeping themselves in this one ogla though will have cliff face now on the rotation a seam can't get much done on their opening push there it's going to be on tj and slasher to hold the line silly now through the smoke he will charge Got a lot of angles to watch, not only that top broken house, the hard one to his left, and that cliff face on the right hand side, a very popular position for players to be hidden in. Here comes the push, on the Draza it comes, Hollow watching that middle cave cut, and the kills are going to keep coming through. Alex finally managed to get one there. Is this going to be enough of an opening for Rocker to finally get on the point? No. Hollow finds himself two kills, pushes that line out once again. Great stuff from OGLA to keep themselves in this. And with 25 seconds left, Minnesota Rocker definitely want to try to make the break on this and maybe one last ditch sort of attempt because again, right now, Optic are in a pretty good spot for the next two hills in a row based on the spawns they have currently. And keep in mind right now, TJ actually going on a full flank. He's able to take down Exceed. So actually for the rotation, not only is Optic Gaming trying to get a little bit of this scrap, I was going to say they would have a pinch at new, but it looks like Minnesota, if they weren't able to get the, the scrap time on this old hill, they were at least able to flip those spawns. They get flipped. A couple of members of OGLA are trying to survive the push from middle. Minnesota Rocker clearing his cave set up one building at a time. Four kills go their way. It was the last player left alive there. It was going to be Draz, I believe, just holding that line as best he could. Now Hollow trying to find something here on the point. Makes his way forward. Kill number one and goes his way. There's the hard point made safe. Hollow finds himself two. Is it enough to now get his boys in on the point? Spawns once again, though, in the hands of OGLA for now. No chance, and you can bet that Draza, number zero, you can bet that they're going to dig in deep on that far right hand side of the map and not let the spawns flip again. And I will say, so far throughout the first half, especially, this has just been an incredibly unstable game. By the way, XC, nice trigger by way, discipline. By the way, he wants to get all the way to the back just to make sure that he can hide and try to block those spawns. But you can see, unfortunately for him, he is the lone man, and Optic Gaming are trying to sniff him out, trying to hunt him down. Yeah, they can get it done though, but Exceed is going to stay here for a while. A lot of hard point time still going the way of Rocker. DJ's ready now for this one to open up, and again, Hollow. They've let this player slip through, so Exceed is able to maybe cause a bit of a ruffle if they can get those kills. The player's now for, for OGLA spawning inside the cave. That means it's now time to go. Here comes the pinch. Exceed. All that hard work now being put to good use. In from behind he goes. Kill number one. His teammates are going to start pushing the front. Could the timing be good here? Not quite. But it looks like the spawns should be in the favor now for Rocker as they do have that side of the cave covered. Can they get the hard point though, Chance? Can they flood these players out? I mean, whether or not they can, already the big play has been made. This is a money hill, and they have stripped away a ton of time that Oppie Gaming was looking to get cut back at the lead. But frankly, still a dogfight in the point. No one can manage to stay alive because all of these M4s for Oppie Gaming are at least keeping it controlled and making sure that not too many players are able to get in. Slash, by the way, nice awareness. Knows if someone jumps in the hill, they're going to be in that corner. Snaps on that player, and Draza Ooh. tries to make the hero play and take away an extra few seconds. But either way, Opti Gaming, in spite of the fact that Exceed made a nice play, they still have a very strong setup. You see the middle cave cut off. The right side of the map is going to be cut off, and you even have a man watching the flank. That means at least the first 20 seconds, this first push for Minnesota is going to take a very long time to get there. Yeah, Minnesota Rocker may be playing this brilliantly but it's the true grit and resolve of OGLA that's getting them through this so far. Alex exceeds Billy. He kills now as they flood in towards that soccer field. TJ Halley trying to find something here on the flank. He's able to catch that player just in the center of the map. The scene goes down. Good stuff. Bravo now trying to break from the top side of the cliff. He will win that gunfight. Exceed goes down. Or excuse me, Silly goes down. Now it's an exceed to try to pick up the pieces here as he moves forward. 
opening shots. The nade's going to be there. That may deal some damage. There it is. Slasher goes down. Quava goes down. Exceed. Will he get the third here on the point? No need. Alex is there to back him up. Rocker playing this one like a fiddle. Can OGLA keep up the pace? This is another situation with that strat time. Just neither team. Two minutes on that game clock just because of how scrappy, how back and forth this game has been. But now we go to that face smash. It is over on this new hill. Last time around, it was Minnesota that was able to get the setup on the preferred side of the map. This time, Optic Gaming with that ever so small advantage. The advantage does not amount to much. If you get silly within AR in those spots open side of game, he gets dealt with. Optic Gaming now attempting to pour that pressure on. But where silly falls, Assault is there to back him up. All of the M4s in the kill feed on both sides of the table and again neither team able to stabilize anything at all we started this hill with less than two minutes on the game clock now we're down underneath a minute and a half i don't even know how many times we've seen it this year miles it might have only been once or twice this could potentially end up turning into a game where the game clock becomes a massive factor just something that you have to keep your eye on of course for minnesota what they're keeping their eye on is the rotation right now up by about 10 points it'd be a little bit less than that as this rotation pops but they have a ton of map coverage quavo though well he deals with the team the most aggressive player out there for minnesota so now minnesota a little bit turtled up in their spawn and this is with the m4s inside the hill for minnesota need to shine do or die five point flips Assault now. It's going to be that front line. Alex trying to keep that left-hand side of the flank safe. Asim's watching through the center of the cave, and Silly's up there by top sandbags. This is a great-looking hold right now from Rocker. Three kills now in a row for Assault. The push now through middle. Silly finds his first. Graz is going to be up next. Can Silly take him down? He can. That's going to be a second kill going through middle. The middle of the map safe. Now it falls to the cliff face once again. We are going to break 200 points now for Rocker, as they have held cave wonderfully. Finally, the kills for OGLA come through. Are they able to secure the next 20? Silly goes down on point. It's going to come down to Alex now. A slasher manages to finally get his toes into the hard point. Can't win the 1v1 as Alex is going to get it. And we're going back and forth, Chance. But it's going to be Rocker for the final 10. And they will have center of the map going in the next. And we saw Rocker make the same play that Optic tried last time with Exceed going on that full flank just so he can make sure to get control of both sides of the hill. And it looks like he's actually able to win a pretty big one-on-one. -on -one. But Quavo, the man that has been on point all game long, picks up a big two just to make sure that they keep Minnesota out of hill for a little bit and keep in mind when nobody's in the hill that's when that game clock is ticking down now less than a minute but frankly for minnesota they're less than 40 seconds away to win this game i don't know if the game clock will be a factor anymore well it could be 35 seconds remaining with this half point salt with a nice two piece there to clean things up four kills in a row for him he's been playing out of his mind 33 overall now he's trying to get involved. Also, 33 kills to himself. Can't quite get 34. There it is. But again, the crossfire there from OGLA in the center of the map. Once again, they do have spawns for the right-hand side of the map for Cave East. However, they still have to maintain those. We've seen two little moments of magic from Minnesota to get those spawns. But again, that tenacity, the vigor of OGLA to hold on. Can they get it done again as Minnesota Rocker starting to walk away with this one? Here comes the break towards next. Slasher with a high ground. Asim goes down. We're going to see some bit of life now from OGLA. They have to hold Cave East for as long as feasibly possible. It is desperate for that hold, Minnesota. One good break on either this hill or the next, and they're going to be good to win the game. So Optic Gaming, not only do they need to stay inside right here and keep Minnesota at bay, but they have to set up for the rotation as well. And frankly, Optic Gaming, the kill starting to light up in the kill feed at least job number one so far is being done they are keeping minnesota trapped at the top left and now tj effectively is just setting up and going for these spawn kills and minnesota may have just decided not even to push all they might be fighting super hard for this rotation and tj right now doing a phenomenal job of dealing with those players well, I hope some of you are hungry because Quavo may have just broken a certain number. More on that later, but still, here we go. 11 points now for the win for Rocker. Can they get the break? As there's no one there from OGLA just yet into the point. And again, you have to hit the rotation. And it looks like Rocker are gearing up for this one in a big way. They're going to have full soccer field control. They've got it for now, but they have to get those players there onto the point. It's a quick flood now from OGLA. Last ditch attempt for them, and then I'll get involved. Alex looks left, looks right. He may have just let that player slip through. And now he's caused a bit of a ruckus, but I think Slasher may have escaped through. He's still alive, so now the hunt is on to try to get him out of the point. Try to get him out of these... Oh no, Quavo with an A gets it done, but Draza now still on point. As they do get a few moments there, but now Rocker in there. Ten seconds for the win now, Chance. OGLA have got to scrape them out of the hard point, and they've got to get themselves in there faster, sooner rather than later. OGLA now with a break.
How long can they hold on for? Here comes Rocker. And keep in mind right now for half the game, there's 16 seconds left on the game clock. So anytime it's contested or not in the hill, that is going to be ticking down. So Optic, they have to put all the pressure inside the actual point. They cannot let up for very long in Minnesota. It looks like part of their strategy might just to be to keep those players out. But those final 12 seconds, going to go the way of Optic. Not good enough to win the game. It all comes down to the final hill. Minnesota are there first, but they do not have the lead. And again, if contest time is there, that game clock is ticking. Taking away. Here we go. Final 10. Slasher from behind. Slasher finds no more than one. And this is going to be huge on the final point. Minnesota sent three in there early to Cave West to get it done. And now we have them on point. Hollow from behind. Finds himself two kills. Can he get any more? He can't get it. Alex is going to be there. Silly now on the point. And we have to see OGLA dive onto this one. Draza ringing the shots out there with the MP5. And there's two seconds for the win. Draza once again. OGLA. They take map number one. Oh my god. Map number one. <laughs> in what has to be the longest hard point game of the year. Optic Gaming was down at 238 to 161, uh, a couple of hills back. In Optic Gaming, not only did they have the perfect hold on the second hill on the map, but then we have players like TJ Halley that are going so far away, all the way over towards, well, all the way over towards the stack uh, over by the tower, and just keeping these players from Minnesota at bay to stop their rotation. And he bought his teammates so much time to get so much pressure to make sure that they could wrap over. He did a fantastic job, and not just that, but the entire game, Quavo, the man that needs to step it up just a little bit, put on for his city, dropped 45 kills to make sure they could get the win. And that is not only a big win for OGLA, but that is a win for all of us, friends. Don't forget to put burritos, and we burritos, text SALTY981 to triple eight triple two to redeem yourself a sweet, succulent Chipotle burrito. Very, very exciting again. I think uh, it's, it's about time we got fed chance. We were gagging for it, my friend. What a hard point map that really was. Very, very excited to see this series already. A banger. And again, an elimination series for both these teams. OGLA with a wonderful start to this one. Let's have a quick look at the last 30 seconds of that exciting hard point. Man, what a map that was, dude. That was a, that was a swing from the start. And I must say, dude, I mean, from start to finish, I thought like Minnesota had that. Rock had that in the bag. I'm seeing the DM group light up. I'm seeing the word choke. I'm seeing all sorts, mate. What are your thoughts? I mean, choke is a great word to describe it. Clutch is another for the side of Optic again. That was a, an 80-point lead with a couple of hills left, and Minnesota just needs about 10 seconds to get through. They get so close, but that is like two hills that they should have had a guaranteed rotation win, and Optic Gaming constantly was able to just get one or two players to make it messy, hollow with the perfectly timed flank through well, and even though he only gets two, well, I say only gets two, does an incredible job, even get shots in the third player to make his teammates job that much easier and I can't possibly begin to express how difficult of a comeback that is for Optic how many things they had to that they needed to go right in those final moments one of the better clutches or one of the better tropes I guess that we have <laughs> seen so far this entire year but even still looking at the the US Air Force quick scope you can already see not only how close that first hard point was but how close this series is likely to be over the course of the year it is a one match difference between these two teams and at least in the wins column only a two mats different between these two teams the slaying power maybe was the, the bigger advantage minnesota had but kenny well quava whatever the hell we're calling them made sure that that was no more completely went off in game number one maps and modes brought to you by the us air force on screen now piccadilly search and destroy up next and chance we had a fun stat for that one again the only time the ogla have won this map this year was when dashi Came out of Gotham City for a quick bit of a bit of a soiree there into London and had some fun. But before we get into that one, we do have our Grubhub picks of the day coming up. That's picks and picks, boys and girls, ready to get into this one as well. But uh, mate, what a hard point that really was. Very very exciting stuff, mate. Let's uh let's get into our Grubhub picks. I went with Slasher, man. I was I was feeling Slasher's performances. You know, not necessarily in the search and destroy on on Piccadilly uh, in the in their first series against against LAG, but I think just today he's coming in swinging. I saw his face light up when they managed to pick up that hard point win there. But mate, you went with a seam from Rocket. I mean, Asim really started to kind of elevate his game in these past few weeks and be that sort of a shining light for Minnesota, even when things started to get dark in the twilight. So in my mind, he was the guy that, again, it's mashing with the seed, mashing that pace, and try to make sure that they can be that strong front line for the team. And he did okay in that game, but obviously, apparently, Kenny was the grub hub pick that we should have gone with because, again, completely turned up in the game, number one.
They really, really did. Well, let's have a look at our photographs now, Chance. What were you oh, eating dumb. today or last oh. night or whenever you took this beautiful photograph, my friend? I think you're up first, dude. Walk me through it. Look, I'll be honest, at this point of the year, I'm just nervous about the Grubhub picks. I, I think I went with sushi <laughs> this time, but I've just gone back to standard because I am just fresh out of ideas. Like, I, I think as far as this duo goes, you are clearly the more creative of the two, and I think I've burnt up quite a few of my uh, my best plans. So, uh, unfortunately, the, the food was delicious, I will say. The picture, I'm very scared of being outmatched. So, dude, I, I also went with sushi, but I, oh, I was Lord. running out of ideas too, but I thought I just had oh, to go 10 out of 10. <laughs> to go oh, 10 out of yeah. 10 and just get what quadruple the amount of sushi as you did admittedly oh, i'm also feeding my wife at the same time but i did actually submit another picture that i think i might just have to put up on twitter because i don't think uh, it was going to make broadcast but hey man yeah that's we've got plenty of time <laughs> Charles, we got plenty of time to get through this one mate but uh again do what you can friends to support your local businesses in the area as grubhub are again from the times of 5 until 9 p.m your time zone grubhub are giving orders of 30 dollars or more 10 bucks off and again go to the perks section of the app grubhub keeping us all alive during these trying times but mate Oh, into the search. Look, Miles, just go, real quick, friend. by the way, the way I see it is if we're lacking with the Grubhub pictures, that just means the players need to make sure that they make up for the excitement levels with the gameplay. So shout out to Rocker uh, and Optic Gaming LA for at least making sure that map one was fire. <laughs> and again, that is basically the way I see, see this series going down. It has round 11s. It has down to the wire respawns written all over it. It does. It really does. And Piccadilly has been uh, no stranger to crazy moment throughout the year i mean of all the maps in modern warfare this one has uh, has brought a smile to my face a few times not as much as our club not as much as st petrograd on the search and destroy front but here we go friends game two elimination match up here rocker versus optic gaming los angeles let's get into this one chance and of course, just to keep it in the back of your mind, Exceed yesterday, it was only one map that we saw him with the sniper in his, uh, his front pocket, so to speak. And, well, he went off with it. A map like Piccadilly, we expect a ton of snipers to come out. TJ, going to be the man to make up for the dash roll. Misses his first shot, but plenty of players still alive. And Quavo, keeping the guns hot, able to strike with that first blood. Exceed continues to impress and search and destroy. Don't forget his performance yesterday on Octave Peak. Crazy stuff. Or well, the day before, excuse me. Wonderful stuff from him. Quavo now. Purple card red needs and be in and out of the tube. TJ, what more can he find with his snipe? Because again, he's no dashy, but TJ in his own right. It's an absolute warrior. And again, holding that B cross, that is the position the snipe's going to be in Quavo, though. He's getting done with the M4. The snipe hasn't really had to come into play too much. Silly with a bomb grab, and this three versus four. That's Mixie trying to find an opening kill. Honestly, Quavo right now trying to be the man in the thorn of Minnesota side consistently. TJ, if not the sniper, able to play out nice and aggressive in his salt. Well, last man standing for the 1v4. TJ is actually going to fall, throw away his life a little bit, but it should not matter. 20 seconds on the clock, time ticking down, and the rest of Optic, well, come out with your hands up. We have you surrounded. Assault, though, he wanted to go out by way of bullet. Going to fall to hollow his hands towards the end, and frankly, at this point, the number of times that Minnesota Rocker have called out, Quavo killed me, here's where he is. In the hard point, it was nonstop. He was able to get the first two picks on this map. They're probably starting to hate this young man, the, the phenom that is Kenny, who's just been putting on. And Well, of course, though, only one round. First blood, maybe by way of sniper. TJ looking for that opening cross. The smoke out a little bit too late. TJ with the timing and a seed for the response. Blink and you miss it. But of course, that just means 4v4. Nixie, the only one with a sniper up on his team, but Optic Gaming, ton of sight control, but they're going to get picked. Trades back and forth. Slash are able to find another, and Optic Gaming now pushing out very aggressively. Store control in their hands, and we've said it before, if you get bombed down and you get store control, it is very easy to convert these rounds. I know, but think of Exceed. Think of Exceed with that sniper in hand, trying to make the difference. Pick here would be ideal. Get that player out of top shop as fast as he possibly can. 20 seconds now for the defuse. Exceed Nassim. Got to try to make something happen here. Exceed making his way forward. If he can catch Draza, great. But he's still got to watch that top shot position. There's the shots from behind. Can Nassim get there in time? And Exceed, no. OGLA 
Another good round as Rocker eliminated 2-0. A great round as well. Uh, I mean, again, so Optic Gaming is actually probably one of the more creative search and destroy teams in the league. I think at the halfway point, just watching those guys play on Arc Live, they mix it up constantly. And that round, what we saw was some hyper aggression over towards that site. And again, just making sure you get that clearance and to be able to push through. And that is a staple. A lot of the times, the players like to hop up in the front side of the window, but Optic Gaming is actually able to get two players just in the bottom of the store. And as soon as you get that control, as long as the bomb is down, it is almost a guaranteed win. And of course, not just that, but Quavo still has the hot hand. What you're saying, Chance, is OGLA bringing out the dirty tricks towards the end of the season. TJ with two. How many more can he catch here in this duck hunt? How many more? One, TJ. Yes, oh my word, it was so close. There's the number three. OGLA with a bang. Minnesota lines him up. TJ knocks him down, making it look easy. And frankly, I don't know if that shot would have connected, but it was certainly close had Quavo not gotten that kill. So, of course, TJ, not too shabby with the sniper rifle either, has been one of the, the staple S&D players since he was playing in his pajamas when he was maybe eight years old whenever he <laughs> first picked up the controller. So, able to throw up three on the board. And this is uh, Opti Gaming right now, full steam ahead. Yeah, Dashi was like, yo, bro, just go to bookshop. And TJ's doing it. And now it's looking lovely. On the offensive, though, OGLA have swarmed over A very, very quickly. Now it's on a hollow. Slash is going to take that position. Alex finds the first block. Bomb goes down. A second for Alex. Lovely bit of work there. The trigger finger immediately comes to action. It's going to be Andraza on the site. The seam's going to get Slasher as well. So OGLA, after the last round heroics, are bleeding at the seams. But Draza manages to find two. Can't get any more out of this one. TJ now the last player left alive in a one versus three. And I know we can expect something here from TJ on the defuse. Check it real quick. There's he catches him. No, there's the death. My word, TJ. Lovely bit of stuff. The Minnesota Rock are too many bodies there on point to make sure the defuse goes down. And that's a nice shot coming in from TJ as well. That man uh, <laughs> apparently is not going to be missing very often in this game. But either way, uh, incredible re response, I would say, making the adjustments from the Minnesota Rocker. We saw this strat a couple rounds ago for Optic where they flood past the bomb site, get that store control. And if you look at just the mini map, even from what Minnesota Rocker was able to set up, complete we had a seam in the mid buses and their entire game plan was trap these players on the site do not let them get in the store and they collapsed on them perfectly making sure to get at least that quick bounce back obviously for minnesota still down two rounds tj oh my word man i mean how many more snipes are we gonna land just do it you know they're there you can tell tj he's getting all kinds of tingles right now as he finds another snipe Silly now, straight onto the bomb. That's great damage dealt, but not going to be enough for Silly. He goes down, and TJ, Quavo, Slasher, you name it, the whole squad. OGLA have taken over Piccadilly by force. A seam and a one versus three. This is nasty, Chance. It's nasty. That is disgusting. A seam, though, maybe a moment. Able to turn that 1v3 into 1v2. And 48 seconds on the clock is a lot of time to work with. Has information on both of these players as well. You have the opportunity to make the play. And the important thing for a seam is he does have the bomb as well. Unfortunately, though, these players are hunting him down. Oh. They're going to line up. And the trades, well, not even necessary. The double challenge and the aggression from off the gaming, just good enough in the end. But of course, it's not that play that was the difference maker, Miles. Right now, TJ is sniping like he's Superman. He has that X-ray vision. <laughs> he really does, man. He's just hitting magic right now. TJ's like, yeah, Bruce got a lot of love on socials. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do the same thing, man. I'm gonna put my big boy Bruce boots on and get involved. TJ, there's no sleeping on this man, whether it's PJs or what. But man, that's that AX50 once again. Can we get it again? So close that time. Another shot for TJ. Man, he's on the run. He's on such a disgusting run. He's only got nine kills, but they've all been nice. Quavo's sitting at six and one as well. The sniper has just been the difference maker here on Piccadilly. Five versus three. To put OGLA on map point. A chance right now with the final three remaining members here of Rocker. Make it two. It's not looking good. Oh my god.
I mean, they're just falling like dominoes at this point. Silly again. We've said it for different players on Minnesota. Last man standing. And frankly, not a lot oh of God. time, not a little love, nothing to work with. Overwhelming sniping presence right now from TJ. I guess he saw how many tweets Bruce got and was like, hey, I've been waiting for this all year. This is my time to shine. It is champs. I'm going to turn up. And frankly, he is what? Nine total kills. At least eight of those were with a sniper. I've only seen him miss two shots and one of those was through smoke where he can't even see the player. He is hitting more shots than he's missing. Shooting players he can't even see. Don't forget the hip marker he got in round number one on the push. But here we go. TJ, way more ma magic for us, my friend. This could be the last round. I wouldn't be too surprised. That beat cross is not a place you want to be going to. But right in the middle of the map, it's going to be Quavo and Alex exchanging gunfire. Drives gets involved as well. Quavo, Quavo finds the first, the second. Can he use Savage? And just like that, assault is is done. Kenny gets another one. OGLA make a statement right there on Piccadilly. Uh, if you were to look up steamroll in the Call of Duty dictionary, it will be just a replay of this map. I mean, not only TJ, right, with the sniper completely on point, legitimately making a highlight reel, his own little montages within an individual game. Quavo was able to get 12 kills. He was 12 and 1, and like it almost goes unnoticed because obviously Quavo had the hot start right off the first two rounds. TJ, the middle of the game was his, but while TJ is getting those snipes left and right, Quavo in the background just picking up every sort of kill. And the crazy thing is like Quavo able to throw up 12 and 1. He was the guy that wasn't even allowed to play when Dashi filled in, and apparently that was great news for the other team because he is on point on this map. Optic Gaming, I, you know, I, I don't know if they've kicked up their just s &D prowess in the past couple weeks, and that's what they've been focused on. But even with the substitute player, they were looking incredible. Now that they got the, the player they originally wanted back, they look even better. And, and after sort of that devastating first map for Minnesota and just the steamroll that was this map too, this is going to be tough to try to get a bounce back. Tough is one way of putting it, mate. Let's have a look at our US Army tactical play. It was, it had to be a magical moment from TJ Halley. What a performance. Individual prowess like you haven't seen. Big time snipes here on Piccadilly. And frankly, like, there was just, like, no hesitation. I mean, he is just going for a quick scope. He misses a shot. He knows exactly where to look for the next guy. Second player tries to cross, and he just makes it look so easy to the point where, again, the X-ray vision, as soon as the player's shooting up top, he, like, perfectly angles the headshot, even though Quavo's there. But every single time he was getting a kill, every single shot he took, he immediately was centering on to exactly where he knew those next players were going to be. That is next level level sniping skill, next level awareness, and frankly, one of the best pure maps from a sniper we have seen all year long. Unbelievable stuff, man. I mean, he could, I've seen aces in, in clips and whatnot, but like against top level players and yeah. this kind of high stakes tournament, really, TJ Halley getting it done. What a run that was. OGLA really looking something special here in this lower bracket run. Quavo, TJ, Sasha, Hollow, and Draza, the two newcomers on the right-hand side of the screen there. Again, they've made their own impact, but you cannot forget about those staples, those superstars we bring up time and time again. TJ Halley, Quavo, and of course, Slasher at the helm. OGLA looking fantastic in this matchup. Again, shout out to the Minnesota Rocker fans who are watching there in the Discord party. For Alex, to see McSeed, Assault, and Silly, this series is far from over. They still have a chance to hit the regain button and go for a big run now with a reverse sweep, starting with a domination. But they have to get it going sooner rather than later. Domination again, a truly unforgiving game mode. And this could well be the last chance we see here for Rocker. They've got to dig deep. Is this the Fimble Winter? Is this the beginning of Ragnarok, the big end? Or are they going to be gearing up for that fight in Valhalla? We'll find out after this break. When the biting winds blow from the north, 
when the warmth of the sun fails. A new age will be upon us. Ragnarok. The end. Are the end. TeamSpeak, the official broadcast communication partner of the Call of Duty League. The US Army, what's your warrior? PlayStation 4, the official platform partner of the Call of Duty League. Call of Duty League is brought to you by Metro by T-Mobile. Rule your day with the number one brand in prepaid. In every battle, there is a moment. Most don't even see it. But for others, it's all they see. And there's the hype! How many men is he gonna run through? That was just easy dominance. They did it! Here, on the ultimate proving grounds, Call of Duty's Elite Converge. When that moment stares you in the face, you'll know one thing. Glory isn't given. Glory isn't easy. Glory is taken. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty League playoffs. Day four. We roll now into map number three between OGLA and Minnesota Rocker. That trophy is at stake. No one's getting it this weekend. But the following weekend after, we will be, of course, crowning a Call of Duty League champion. What a year it has truly been. This has been up, down, in and out, you name it. It's been a crazy one. But before we get into this game, make sure you head over to Scuff Gaming's Twitter account right now for a chance to win yourself a CDL Scuff Impact controller. This isn't an Impact, but it is a very beautiful controller. Look at that bad boy it is. right there. That's Look at that absolute stud. Oh, sweet. Child of mine, it's a babe. It's not quite an impact. The impact is a little bit thicker, you know. It's a little bit more in the in the back end. It's got a couple of C's in there for that thick. But we're ready to get into this game, Chance. We're ready to go, my friend. I'm pumped. I'm keen. Everyone's scuff controls are plugged in and they got them thumbs twiddling, getting ready to go. But make domination now. Rocker versus Optic Gaming. This is it, dude. This is it for OGLA. They can just clean 3-0 this series. Can Rocker make the comeback? I mean, uh, that's going to be tough because right now for Rocker, like, welcome to the jungle. This is an Optic Gaming team <laughs> that it looks like a, a sort of night and day switch because, like, when Hollow and Draza got picked up on this team originally, it wasn't necessarily the saving grace because it wasn't, like, a complete 180 turnaround, but it was close to it. It was at least 140, 150 of those degrees because they were the guys that were having all those clutches in s &D, that we're throwing up the big games in the respawn. But now it's champs time, and it is, again, 
that night and day switch. It is Quavo has been taking over this series. It has been TJ has been electric, and it has been the veterans uh, across the board for this Optic Gaming team that have making sure that they do not want to lose, and they do not want to go out like this, not in the biggest tournament of the year, but for Minnesota, got to pull off the reverse sweep, do or die back against the wall for Optic Gaming, potentially a $75,000 map. 75,000 plans up for grab for the win here. OGLA and putting the bend in three to be ideal for them, but they've still got to get through this Rocker lineup. B flag goes the way of Rocker. It's going to be all C for OGLA for now. Now the counter attack is off. Slasher leading the charge. Beautiful shot just through the smoke there as Alex is going to go down. He's got another player in and amongst it with him, but can Slasher rip and tear his way through this B flag? As he's going to get a lot done now, and that's a wonderful bit of retake there from OGLA. The kills come through, B flag is going to be theirs, and they're on top of A now. The flip has begun. I mean, the, the train that really Optic Gaming was able to start in the latter half of that hard point has not slowed down a single bit. That is off the opening break. They're immediately able to flip those spawns to A and B. They're immediately able to get that setup that they want and exceed. Well, maybe was trying to be the guy to get through that back line of Optic Gaming, but no dice for him. And Optic Gaming in maybe not full control because Silly is trying to cause issues, but that was the best possible opening break Optic could have asked for. Now they're going for a neutralization over towards C. They have not slowed this pace down a single bit. Yeah, Kenny got the spawns over towards C. We're seeing a bit of love in towards the B flag as well now. Minnesota Rocker starting to look a little weak at the knees, if you will, as OGLA start to take things over. Now, it's time for an Astro Gaming listen in with Optic Gaming Los Angeles. Hey, Navy, double Navy. I'm dead. I'm in C. 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 I'm in C.
Things are starting to get a little darker now for Rocker. Yeah, and maybe you take the, the saving grace if they're able to capture B in those final few moments just fighting for a point. But even when that's happening, Optic Gaming were on point with getting the neutralization for at least a tick over on the flip side. But this is now, what, a 26-point lead at the half where Optic Gaming started that out on the bad side. That was one of the faster flips that we have seen on this map all year long. It was on the Piccadilly, one of the most dominant performances we have seen all year long. And again, the way that Azir Cave Hardpoint win, it was roughly 241 to 166 in favor of the Minnesota Rocker. And that was one of the best comebacks that we have seen all year long. Optic Gaming looking like a different animal and the same beast that these players have been their entire careers. It's fun to see, you know, I was thinking back about what you said about Hollow and Draza. They did wonders to pull OGLA into the position they are in now, and it's up to Quavo and TJ, the older guns in the squad. It's weird to say that because they're still very young, but, you know, the staples there of that Optic roster, they're the ones who are doing the heavy lifting now to make sure that the rest of the squad can keep on going. OGLA have certainly come together at the right time here in the year. I'm sure the fans and the administration are all really loving things thus far, but it's not quite over yet. Still A and B control in Optic's hand. Rocker still trying to fight back into this one. Silly. Unaware, cut out from behind. And Exceed trying to make his way forward. But again, the OGLA flood, they just seem to be in every position possible right now. And Rocker still fighting from the front. And right now, Optic Gaming are effectively holding that B flag with just two players. They lose top L control, and you see Slasher immediately. He rotates in to take care of it. So right now, they have the systematic approach. You're able to get players to cut through the middle of the map. And even when they start to fall, well, Minnesota, best opportunity to actually get this B flag. But Optic Gaming, again, just because of the side of the map they're on, they just need to make sure that they keep this map stable. It is much more important to not lose the A side of the map than it is to immediately get that B flag back. Uh, you need points. Points is really the goal right now for Rocker. Stabilize the bleeding. Do what you can to just keep your team in this. Still three minutes and 30 to work with here on the clock. See, close position up front. Draza with a lovely bit of a crouch shot there. Just underneath the aim there of Exceed. So he's going to pick up the assist. Gets the kill. And keep in mind right now, Alex now. has gotten through. He made it through on A. You're absolutely right. And that's going to be a little bit of a touch under the flag there. Alex now. Trying to make something special happen here. The neutral's going to work out, but again, you have to look at OGLA on towards B. So you give up one flag to lose the other. It's spinning plates right now for both of these teams. Hollow trying to watch the mid-map cut. Gets one of them done. There comes the push now from Rocker. Trying to get back on towards the B flag. And man, it is back and forth right now. Chance by OGLA still in the driver's seat. And again, OGLA right now just doing a great job of keeping things stable. Alex was able to actually sneak through. He was on the A flag for maybe, what, three, four seconds, immediately gets dropped. And while that's going on, Optic Gaming again, keeping things stable, reclaiming that B flag. And even when they don't have that L control, well, you're posted up on event. It takes two players to take Slasher down. And now the break is here for Minnesota Rocker. Two and a half minutes left in the game, only down by 30 points. This is still very winnable. Still winnable. They're going to try to make the overextension towards A. You can see OGLA turtling up. No kills go the way of Silly on the cross. Still one lone defender left there on the A flag. TJ and Co now spawning in towards C. Rocker should be able to flood that A flag immediately, get the cap, and take care of that lone defender. But it looks like he's really making a work of it. Assault finally takes care of Quavo. A very difficult kill at this point in time. Silly now. Up top AC. Shots are going to be there. No kill just yet. A lovely reposition. Slasher got those down. And there, Draza getting involved with the M5. MP5, excuse me. As Assault's killing spree continues. And chance it is not over yet. C flag now is going to be changing hands for the brief moment. As OGLA spawns are going to get a little bit funky. But how will Rocker hold them here? Oh, Assault is actually doing a very nice job responsible for keeping the A flag and Quavo who got traded. Alex is going to be there as well. And Minnesota, by the way, they needed that C flag play. They are able to hold this triple cap for just long enough that I think they're down by, what, maybe 18 points with a minute and a half left. I think they might be close to the point where they can just hold the two flag setup and win, but maybe off the game with that neutralization, have four Rocker's hand. They might need to neutralize C for just a tick or two. It's going to be close down to the wire. This is going potentially down to the wire as Quavo keeps these kills going. Finally stopped there at the front door of that warehouse. The flag now looking a bit more dangerous. It's only on Alex to make the defense now. Two players now for OGLA swarming in. Now three towards the A flag. The spawns have flipped once again. OGLA, this could be it. One minute remaining. Exceed cut to ribbons there on the B flag. Hold the defense. Hold the line. TJ finds another kill. Now on the Draza, 21 and 14 overall. He and Hollow have played outstandingly alongside 
by Quavo here in the domination. The 10-point difference. Draza once again slip slides, finds a few more. That was two in a row before going down. Chance 35 seconds now left. Is it still possible for Rocker? It's looking pretty tough right now. They got to flood that C flag. TJ is responsible for being down by nine seconds, 30 seconds left. Rocker already to the point. They're going to need the triple cap, but with the pressure that they have with Optic Gaming slaying like this, it cannot be done. Optic Gaming able to get the hot 3 0. If it wasn't the veterans, well, across the board, everyone throwing up numbers to get the final stamp on it. Draza with 24, Slasher with 22. 20 plus for everyone across the board and on the flip side, obviously not the case. Dominant fashion for that 3-0 and for Opti Gaming, we're looking down the barrel of an incredibly long loser's bracket run. They're making sure to grab every bit of momentum that they can as early as possible. And there it is. The sweep complete. It is a clean 3-0 as OGLA will continue the run here at Champs. The sun has finally set on Rock of the Twilight no more. That was OGLA's sixth 3-0 of the season. The third time they've done that to Minnesota Chance. It was a hard fought battle, but man, when the search and destroy looked that strong, there was some moments in the domination, but what a statement from OGLA as they continue the push. That is a huge increase to their prize pool as well with that big win. And I'll tell you, man, for this Optic Gaming team, like, I was coming into this tournament, I was very aware that they were a threat, but in my mind, they were a team that, like, at best was going to be able to make a shallow run. Like, maybe take down an extra team or two, maybe jump into that top six range and cause a little bit of an upset. But after watching this series, I'm way more scared of them than I was before. This is players who have been struggling this year, like Slasher and Quavo and TJ as well. They have not been at their best. This series, they look to be hitting form in a very strong way. So the team was already in a pretty decent spot. They, in my mind, have elevated, them, elevated themselves an extra notch. They are looking like a force to be reckoned with. A true force to be reckoned with, my friend. Uh, this was a scary series, for sure. I mean, Minnesota, we both had uh, sort of different, very, very different predictions going into this one. OGLA slammed those predictions right back in our face. Let's have a look at the scuff play of the game. It was going to be the last few moments there of the domination. Again, Minnesota Rocker with a trip cap to fight themselves back into this one. But at the end of the day, OGLA winning those individual engagements and getting the job done. And, and frankly, honestly, these final few moments just show the advantage of like building yourself the nice lead, right? Because Minnesota, the game was winnable in theory, even if they were able to hold just a two-flag setup a little bit earlier on. But then you have guys like Quavo who are just able to go for that overextension, go for that neutral, and that just drags players on Minnesota back, and they just don't have the time. So really, in my mind, that game was won effectively because of how well Optic Gaming played that first half. It's a theme in so many of these different ones of how important the opening break is going to be in both hardpoint and domination when you're on the bad side. Opti Gaming, the strategy was on point. You accrue a nice little lead, and it makes your game that much more comfortable long term. And of course, though, you talk about comfortability. Opti Gaming, not really a moment to breathe and relax because they have the Florida Mutineers up next that they have to deal with. That is going to be one hell of a series. One hell of a series, OGLA, to upset Mutineers at this time of the year with all the hype surrounding that squad. Unprecedented scenes here, potentially, in the CDL. But the Mutineers, again, one of the most formidable squads in the tournament without a shadow of a doubt. One of the most dangerous teams in the league going head-to-head -head with OGLA. It is certainly going to be very, very interesting. Of course, in we have the Royal Ravens taken on the subliners as well, my friend. Uh, and we got our, our schedule presented by the U.S. Army. But dude, what were you going to say? I was going to say, just to jump in and talk about that bracket. Actually, you know, well, I'll just say, last year at Champs, it was uh, 100 Thieves, right? It was Slasher and Quavo that had to go on a massive tear through Champs. They started out in loser's bracket one, or loser round one, excuse me, and they're in a similar position. And that bracket <laughs> is starting to look a little bit similar to me. But of course, the, the postseason schedule we have presented by the U.S. Army. Next up, is anyone going to be mad at it, Miles? We got FaZe in Chicago going head to head. That's our Game Fuel Marquee matchup coming up after this one. But of course, the prizing structure here of CDL Champs. 
First up, 1.5 milli. It's a lot of cheddar. Think of all the burritos you can buy with that one. Again, second place gets himself a cool 900,000 and so on and so forth. But again, for these teams, every single win is an incredible leap forward in that prize pool. Just got to think, OGLA, those three maps, net them a tremendous jump. Can they keep going, though? That really is the question. And Chance, you're right. That is the story for OGLA. Round one of losers to go this far already. Frankly, I didn't see it coming. I thought... I thought this might have been a much tougher match for them. I thought the new look rocker would have been a lot harder. Uh, but again, 3-0 says a lot. Really, really does. But mate, what a day it's been. We're only halfway through the day so far. We hope you at home are extremely comfortable. Our Game Fuel Marquee match coming up just after this one. Again, Chicago Huntsman versus the Atlanta phase. I cannot wait, Chance. I really cannot, dude. I mean, have you got any thoughts going on that one? I, dude, I, I think uh, Pac-Man talked about a bit. I talked about this a bit, quite a bit at the top of the show. The most recent time these guys faced, FaZe did not look like the normal team. Chicago truly took it to those players and took them down. But I'm on the side of Pac-Man. I don't expect it to at least not go the exact same way. I don't think it's dominant in either direction. That again, I know I said it for this series and was completely wrong, but has a game five, round 11, a banger of a series, especially just because of how good Chicago's search and destroy game has been as of late. It's going to be incredible to watch. It will be truly incredible. As for a social soundboard, this one comes from Pomar. She's saying Atlanta Faze versus Chicago Huntsman COD Champs Online. OMFG, which I believe means uh, something along the lines of only uh, men forget uh, grips or something like that. I'm not sure what exactly he meant by OMFG, but uh, we can look that one up on Urban Dictionary a little bit later, my friend. But brother, this is going to be a humdinger. The last time you said they matched up, it was very, very different. I think today will be an extremely exciting match. Can't wait to get into this one of course thing Merck and Maven will be taking that one very excited after this break but mate that's going to be it that's going to be it for Rocker the end of the run the end of the season it started off with a bang and it went out with a whimper sadly but again they can now put their feet up they can think upon the year and look forward to what's coming next again Cold War mm, a little bit of news coming up a little bit later I think as well very excited to see all them trailers and whatnot all them teasers have certainly got this pickle tickled and uh, I think after this mate god I don't even know this is this we've still got two series left today brother it's going to be, I mean, so yeah, the way we set up champs, it's like the two matches every single day. Now we're getting yeah. into the nitty gritty. Now we're getting into the thick of it of where the bracket, where the matches really start to heat up. So it's a longer day for sure. But in my mind, that just means more Call of <laughs> Duty to watch. And that means a great Saturday that we're going to have. It really does. It really does. Of course, this, uh, this upcoming match against Chicago Atlanta, uh, a rematch last time was a 3 0 chance. I mean, it, what do you think is massively different against? And Pac-Man touched upon it briefly in the pre-show. Now we're talking about it. I mean, I just feel like for Atlanta, they're, they're at their most dangerous when they have something to prove. And I think that was the case when we saw them dip out a little earlier in home series where it was like, well, Atlanta outside of the top two, they came back swinging in the next events. I feel like a dangerous Atlanta, a wounded one, it's a, it, it's a scary thing to behold. I wonder if that's going to be the case today. Again, it's champs time. This is playoffs. This is it. It's all or nothing. They got themselves top seed throughout the entire year. You've set themselves up in the best possible position do you think they give up that advantage in this first map i, I don't think any advantage is going to be given up by no. either team <laughs> like the way i see it is these two teams have been expecting to play each other repeatedly the entire year this is only like the second time i think we've seen the matchup but these teams both knew the past three weeks when they can go for those game planning that they're going to be facing each other they have all the time in the world to go and focus on the maps that they're expecting to play to focus on these strategies if you're on the bad side on a hack hard point you know that they're going to be spending a ton of time just to figure out what their opening break is going to be see if there's any stuns and nades that they can truck at a specific player to find that open lane when you talk about the amount of detail that these going to be paid attention to by these two teams it's going to be nothing more and of course we've seen a show from the chicago boys against these guys before their s d has been on point but like that's honestly like part of the, just like the fun for me right like chicago's s d has been on point point recently it has been their saving grace they've been phenomenal but that's been phases bread and butter all year long it is very much maybe a whoever wins that map one gets that little bit of advantage can run away with it the domination can be the swing match like it is impossible to predict exactly how this series is going to go but miles it is going to be fantastic to see so frankly i want to get out of here just so someone else can take over and watch it and that means we'll have atlanta phase versus chicago huntsman 
after this commercial break. Mate, thank you very much for the hard carries, my friend. Thank nice you. Job. Thank you very, very much, mate. Well, we're not quite going to throw you to a break just yet. We oh, have Lando. Right. Oh, I got mate. Of myself. It's right. You're excited. You want to get in the green room and enjoy the show. But we've got our PlayStation interaction. Lando is going to be talking to Quavo. Lando, take it away. I want to know what Kenny's going through right now. Absolutely, Miles. Yeah, I've got Kenny standing by. Of course, it is your instant reaction brought to you by PlayStation. I'm Lando. Kenny, OGLA. Well, we just saw a fantastic W coming in from you guys, but it would be a sin for me not to ask, right? I have to take you back to that hard point on Azir Cave. Things are looking grim, right? What? Minnesota's up. It was like 230 to 160. The hard point time, right. for God's sake, is starting to tick down. Everything is looking like it's about to be a rocker victory, but you guys make an unreal comeback in what is probably one of the best hard points that we've seen all season long. What sparked the comeback, my friend? Honestly, I didn't. I personally didn't realize we were down so much. Um, it it came down to that that last P two. Um, a lot of teams went off P two and on that map in general, but uh, we got to contest that and kind of kept it scrappy. So uh, as long as we kept them off the P two time, we knew we could come back. Um, and also, like on the last rotation, I got a big two piece to win us that P four hill. Um, one yep. of them absolutely got um, they got fried. So uh, <laughs> other than that, I mean, like I said, I personally didn't know notice. Um, were down so much i just realized i was actually shooting really straight and i was actually frying so like it kind of was like i just assumed we were winning but then when i realized like going into that last p2 like i said we were losing and i was like we just gotta get through this hill and then we'll be fine yeah well you get a solid victory here but you drop 40 plus in the hard point i know what in the search and destroy is like a 12 and one performance the dom is great as well but the thing is right there's still a lot of ground to cover right the, the victory here yeah. versus rocker is great but i know for you and, and obviously the team there is still a lot of ground to cover in the losers bracket and i know a lot of people right. have kind of been putting out on social media kenny that you guys are kind of a lot of people's favorite team to make a losers bracket run as someone who has kind of been in that position last year with hundred thieves what's it going to take for ogla to keep keep that momentum flowing and continue on here in the losers bracket uh well me and Austin like have been through this since last year and we just know we just take it match by match don't look at it as a loser bracket match or a winner's bracket match just we need to beat this team that's in front of us as long as we look at, look at it that way and play that play like we're supposed to play um we'll be fine and then we'll just keep going and going and going and then once grand finals comes it's like oh that was really quick so it's like just focusing on the match that you have in front of you is just really key not thinking about anything before or after, to be honest. Right. Now, Kenny, before I have to let you go, uh, I have to ask you quickly about what we saw yesterday, or rather the other day from Dashy, right? He steps in your place in the search and destroy uh, to get mm -hmm. the game five victory over LAG. From your perspective, obviously having to be on the si sidelines, how was it seeing Dashy go big for the team? Um, It was definitely pretty big just because like, uh, I'd assume he wasn't playing as much as... I mean, he was on the starting roster, so uh, putting him in, I didn't doubt him at all, to be honest, because it was Piccadilly, mm -hmm. and Dash is probably one of the best snipers in COD, and so, like, I kind of knew they were going to put him on a sniper. It just sucks that we couldn't do our exact strats, because a lot of that map is dependent on me, because I, um, I, I'm, like, the point man. I'd get a lot of first buds. Yeah. I'd run first type thing, so, like, I'm, like, it's going to switch up our pacing, but I'm just hoping he hits a lot of snipes, and he delivered that, so I'm appreciative of it and i've thanked him so he's pretty goaty for that yeah man definitely well that could be uh you know not necessarily an expected but one that could possibly be uh what sparked uh the possible losers bracket run for ogla but of course that was your instant reaction brought to you by playstation kenny thanks so much for joining me and uh and best of luck in the rest of the tournament my friend thank you all right, well, when we come back after this quick little break, we have got an absolute barn burner. It's the rematch, Atlanta Phase versus the Chicago Huntsman when we come back.